Would you like to introduce your name, course, university, and hometown? Hi, yeah, my name's Louis Callahan. Uh, my course is media production, uh, final year at the minute. Uh, I'm at Bournemouth University and I live in Dorking currently as my hometown. Okay, so would you like to introduce Bedroom to Booth? So Bedroom to Booth, it's a student graduate project, uh, essentially the documentation of my friend going from bedroom to DJ booth, performing in front of a live crowd and his battle with anxiety and depression and overcoming mental mental health problems in order to successfully DJ in front of a crowd. Okay. There's a website and a documentary for that. So could you remind us of the course you're taking? Yeah, I'm doing um, media production. And why did you choose to do media production? So media production at Bournemouth, uh, they're really highly rated for media. Uh, they're actually one of the highest in the UK and I think in Europe as well. Uh, it was for the credentials and the sort of recognition that I'd get for achieving a degree from Bournemouth Uni and uh, the steps that, well, the sort of opportunity that, that would offer later on in life. Uh, Bournemouth just, I don't know, because it's so highly rated, mm. there was just, that was quite appealing, being able to go there, get the degree and then it'd hopefully make the job job search a little bit easier because it's not easy out there so obviously you've been there for four years now so obviously you're enjoying it is it three four mm -hmm. years three years three three oh, years oh, yeah. oh, three, three years, years sorry now. three years so you didn't take a you don't take a year out for work so i did my i did three placements but i did them over summer this ah, last okay. summer gone we do have the off they do have the opportunity sorry to do um to do a placement for a year but i opted to do one over summer instead okay so what do you think of your course so far for these three years? Yeah, so it's been um, first year was very much bringing up, bringing everybody up to speed, sort of introducing media aspects, media theory, making people critically think and analyze media. Second year was more about the skill set and learning certain things that are going to help you with production and actually making content. And third year is sort of the best. It's when you're set free. You use that analysis, that critical thinking in order to produce media content that's actually going to I'd just actually draw an audience in and engage an audience while also telling a story. So you can use all of the skills and all of the production skills to make something um, that's going to make an audience want to watch it. But also you're tailoring that to certain audiences and target audiences. And it's working in the way that you want it to work because some usually I'd make a YouTube video before I went to uni. It would be all over the shop. You wouldn't have a set audience in mind. It wouldn't be targeted to anyone. So it's like, making you think who you're actually producing it for, why you're making it, and then go and having the skills to actually, yeah, exactly, then having the skills to go and make it. So what do you think of your, do you like, if you liked it, disliked it? Yeah, You've so been there first for three year, years. <laughs> yeah, so it's weird now coming to the end, actually. But uh, first year, I wasn't the biggest fan. I've quite, um, had quite a lazy work ethic, I'd say. Didn't really enjoy doing work. But um, the more freedom that I've been given to think creatively and like work creatively and the more skills that I've learned over these three years, it doesn't feel like work anymore because mm. it's like, it's more enjoy of a hobby it. being able to, yeah, exactly. So being able to make content is fun. I really enjoy it. It's not ever like, oh, I've got to go and make a video now. It's like, wow, I've got, I've got a video to make. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's do it. Like, it's fun. Yeah. It's really cool. It's inspiring, motivating. I think um, throughout the course as well, the, the sort of contacts that you make and the relationship you build with people on your course has really helped me to enjoy working in the team and work sort of to briefs with teams as well because first year you don't know anyone it's quite hard to communicate if you have a director you're thinking why is he telling me what to do he doesn't know what he's doing but then it's about learning that respect and thinking well they've got that role I'm going to listen to them and we'll make something as a team rather than sort of everyone el like elbows up trying to be the one in charge. Right. So yeah, it's, it's good. Like community Progresses. in a way, and it helps you to kind of just exactly. get together. So mm -hmm. in your opinion, uh, did you come from college or sixth form? I came from sixth form. So what do you think the best A-levels or subjects in college to do for your course, to get an advantage when you start university? Mm -hmm. So I did, I did do media as an A-level. That's massively helped, I think been able to have that sort of theory laid down before you even go it put me at an ad, well at an advantage really um graphic design if you can do that I know that's not offered in many but I did that as a GCSE and that has massively helped 
me be able to like do branding and logos and create content just even for social media being able to make my own gifts and stuff like a lot of people just that that would be something that they'd struggle with a bit more and uh business i'd really really recommend business uh just because if you have that business mindset you're thinking why am i making this if it's for money i'm going to be able to budget i'm going to be able to make sure that i stick to the set goals that i have aims you can set yourself objectives and also history, because there's a lot of essay writing in media that's sort of overlooked English or history, just because those essay writing skills are going to be really beneficial and you'll get them from those subjects. OK, and um, let's say a student is going to study multimedia journalism. What can they do during what can they do during summer to kind of maybe they didn't do those subjects, but they can. What can they do to bypass their time and get ready for multimedia journalism for, during their summer? What, oh sorry media production um, but media sorry media production no it's fine because multimedia journalism is essentially an aspect of media production media production so broad so oh, it's, it, okay it, so yeah uh, if you want to do journalism the thing i'd recommend is just get put yourself out there speak to news outlets get work experience go and speak to journalists speak to the people that you want to be identify roles get your linkedin profile start into just sort of identify roles that you like message these people people love being messaged if they if you're if they're your role model that's inspiring for them they're like yeah of course i'll help you uh, they get you work experience for media production i'd recommend just make content use a camera make things record things up start a youtube channel just do all of the things that are going to help you when you're actually on a course media production is about creating content tell a story write a script go and film something and go and create something and see if you enjoy the process and even get a crew together just make your own little film even if you don't think it's good the skills that you're going to learn in doing that are invaluable you're like you're going to just learn so much even hey. communication talking to people managing a team so you said you go to Bournemouth university mm-hmm uh, can you tell us the worst thing or things about Bournemouth University? The worst things? The worst. I think um, the worst things. Oh, that's, I think. If you don't have anything, that's great. <laughs> there's nothing that's like stood out as being particularly bad. I mean, my accommodation, I, I we'll, absolutely we'll get on, loved it. We'll get on to the accommodation. Yeah, so I don't know. There's nothing that stand out bad. That's... I think... The that's only thing that's happened that's been bad is coronavirus. That's oh. it. That's the only... <laughs> oh, so that's but great. Yeah. What about the good things about Bournemouth University? I think um, location is amazing. Uh, the people generally are very... They're just... I don't know. They're my type of people. I've visited other universities and I didn't really get the same vibe that I got from Bournemouth. It's quite relaxed. It's quite laid back. Everyone seems to be friendly as well it's not like everyone's trying too hard everyone just sort of gets is on a level gets and gets on yeah. with each other I think um the nightlife was perfect it's not too big a city like, it's not it's even a city so it's can not you like go more into that so you said location and nightlife can you tell us why mm -hmm. what about so I think uh, yeah yeah so the beach obviously <laughs> um everyone always talks about the beach but it's really good if you want to chill there in summer if you want to even just walk down and de-stress I used to run a lot by the beach and it was a great way to sort of just dissociate yourself from uni if you're getting stressed and just enjoy being outside. The beach is a great outlet, I think, as well as nightlife as well. Uh, the clubs are really good. Like, I think they're underrated slightly, but Bournemouth nightlife is really fun. And the community as well. You really get a sense of community when you're out in Bournemouth. I also think the coffee shops and restaurants are really good in Bournemouth as well. But they're sort of overlooked by students, but they are really good. So now we're going into accommodation. Let's break down, obviously, the three years. So in your first year, where did you stay? So I stayed in Cranbourne House. And what, do you, what did you think? Cranbourne is probably the most dirty, <laughs> oldest of the, of the accommodations. <laughs> there was uh, really, honestly, there were rats kicking about. Oh. That was because it's quite an old building. Okay. How, however, the way that Cranbourne's laid out is just next level i've recommended cranbourne to people that have gone to uni after me and they have made so many friends it's the best sense of like community i think and an accommodation because the, the flats are facing one another oh okay. they're, they're, it's quite small so you're instantly friends with neighboring flats you've got flats above you below you everyone's always walking down the stairs mm -hmm. constantly because of the way it's structured so you're meeting and seeing people all the time and there's north south and center block 
so you can see people across from accommodations. Oh, so okay. even so if there's a prize happening, you can, inst- and because it. it's not huge, yeah, you can see the prize and run up and knock on their door and join in the prize. I did that quite a lot. And that was how I made a lot of my friends, just put yourself out there. And there's just, everyone was so inviting, especially during the first few weeks, because everyone wants to be friends. So, yeah, and cool. if we go into our second year? Yeah, so second year, I lived in Winton. I lived on a road called Frederica Road. Uh, so about a five minute. Yeah, it was in a, oh, sorry, okay. yeah, it was in a shared, shared house, six of us um that was interesting as well a lot of skills learning there like looking after bills and paying (laughs) rent and stuff like that but yeah I enjoyed it actually it was quite refreshing because halls is noisy so like a lot I loved it because I was always out I but like I said I didn't have a great work ethic in first year so it was the perfect place for me but when I needed to settle down in second year and actually do work like it was the perfect sort of balance of being able to party have house parties, but also go and go and do work and yeah, have my own space, my own big room when I needed to, rather than a smaller like accommodation room. Would you suggest going to a house from halls or would you say? A hundred percent. I think uh, you learn a lot of skills as well, living in a house, how to keep your kitchen clean. That's one thing that people fall out over constantly, but it's just, it's part of the process. You'll, you'll make a lot of a uh, I mean, you'll learn a lot of skills, sorry. Just even like mowing the lawn, stuff like that, that you're never thinking like maintaining a garden. Like that's never even crossed my mind, but it's stuff that we were doing because we had a house and we cared about it. it so now cool. you're in your final year. Are you still in a house? I'm in a flat this year. There's okay. just two of us. Well, sorry, three of us, two others. And yeah, we're in a, we're in a flat Is together. Is it different from a house or? Mm-hmm. So we don't have the garden that we necessarily have to maintain. It's more of a concrete like slab, but uh the flat itself is big enough for all three of us. It's nice. It's easier to maintain. I think we have to be more conscious of making noise, which is a big thing. In second year, I would have really struggled with that because I DJ myself or mix. It's quite hard to like not make noise when you're mm. mixing because you get into the music, you want to turn it up. Awesome. But um, having the flat, I don't know. It means that because I'm not allowed to blast music or make as much noise, I'm probably more focused on work, which mm. is really good for me because I, I do get distracted quite easily. So it's useful. Okay, so in your opinion, what do you think the best university accommodation is from what you've seen? I think for sense of community, Purbeck or Cranbourne, those two are really, really good. And I think in terms of uh, like being modern and nice, Home Park, I really, really, I spent a lot of my time in Home Park. I really like Home Park. The people in Home Park are really nice. And uh, it's just a bit, it's just more like a hotel than student accommodation for me personally. But it's clean it's really really clean and everyone there's nice as well so okay can we go more into the Bournemouth area can you give us specifics of what nightclubs cafes and what there's to do in the area so the example mm-hmm. I give is say if you had a friend never been to Bournemouth and obviously they're out for the weekend or out for a week and they're in Bournemouth what is the must do's you have to do before they leave obviously aside from going to the beach <laughs> so I think um one of the big things that Bournemouth has to offer is uh, the student union fire station. The fact that it is an old fire station converted into student union and a club, it's really good. There's a lot of lot of coffee shops. Like I, I love coffee. I'm constantly drinking it. It keeps me going so much. But <laughs> there's a lot, like go and visit all of these smaller places and smaller restaurants as well. Like we made a point of going to sort of restaurants that weren't chains and weren't branded just to experience different food. Mm. There's like good Greek food. There's good Thai food. There's stuff There's stuff that you'll find, good Indian food that you'll just find across Bournemouth that's not really advertised, but it's really good. We went for one of the best Indians. You bring your own beer. You get absolutely hammered while you're, while you're eating this really nice food. And then we went to a club called Bunker. And Bunker's really interesting because it's. I think you can book it during a week. Like this is what we used for the event, which we'll get onto later. But I think... Um, bunker you can book for 150 pounds for a night so if you wanted to have your own event even for a birthday party or something or if you wanted people to dj or just to have your own club night it's 150 pounds and you've got all of your mates just in your own club setting that's one thing that people don't really speak about with bournemouth it's quite easy to go and do that Mm. i think cameo as well really really good club exactly everyone's (laughs) always loving cameo wednesdays and that's probably the biggest sense of community you get from bournemouth especially with all the societies out, everyone's kind of in their fancy dress or no clothes, whatever it is that week. But yeah, I don't know. It's 
Bournemouth scored good nightlife. I rate it a lot. Okay. So, what are the job prospects in Bournemouth? The job prospects? So, are there a lot of jobs? Are there little jobs? Did you have a job while you were at Bournemouth? Mm -hmm. So, I've had, so I was a student ambassador for the uni, which is quite an easy job because it's sort of zero hour contract. You pick and choose when you want to work. I worked in Bournemouth Library, so I was just stacking books, but that was just a, a means of income. I needed some money. So that was quite an easy job. Uh, I worked in a co-op that was nearby. I was on bakery, so I started work at half five in the morning. Beautiful. And it was rough, mate. I wouldn't <laughs> record. I was rough. So anyone who's thinking of working in the bakery, just don't. <laughs> because it's just, it's quite, you have, I don't know, waking up at half four every morning with uni work, it was too hard to balance both. But there's a lot of opportunities to work in Bournemouth. You can, there's supermarkets, coffee shops, student ambassadors, there's jobs within the university and there's loads and loads of retail jobs as there is with anywhere. It's just about getting there first because a lot of students sort of, of apply at the same time. But yeah, there, there's so, a lot of jobs. Did you join any societies while you were at Bournemouth? I didn't for my first two years, but during my final year, I worked as head, like, head designer for Nerve Radio. Ah, so I was just sort of doing like graphic design and content for them. Do you suggest joining Nerf Radio? Yeah, if you're if you're doing media production or if you're doing any media related content or course, then uh, the the Nerf Society, um, I'd recommend just because one, it looks good on your CV, and two, you'll get sense of working in a team that isn't people on your course. It's a whole different dynamic. You have to work more professionally because you don't know these people. But yeah, I got a lot of skills out of it. Just explain what Nerve is, but obviously some people you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. So Nerve is um, sort of, uh, they host, I think it's news, radio, TV, uh, sport, and podcast and journalism, I think, I think, and magazine. So essentially, they are a student society. They put out content whether that be magazine or radio mm -hmm. or whatever I'll let's talk about radio because I did it but there's live shows that they do uh, it's a it's a sense of community the students are all coming together to produce content they have presenters they have it's, it's basically a, an actual radio station they're functioning as any radio station would but you're learning the skills that are going to be helpful in working in a professional environment mm. for an actual radio station so we went live on FM because uh, we're usually just an online web player, so people would have to go onto the internet to listen to us. But we, for two weeks, were broadcast out as an FM station. So it means you're learning the skills that an actual FM station is gaining in, I don't know, producing the content as they would. I don't okay. know if I explained that very well. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's just a big media. It's just society, a big media. Basically. <laughs> yeah, that's so the simple way of it. You said you were sixth form and you chose mm -hmm. university. So why did you choose university over an apprenticeship or going right into work? So, um, as I said, I had a really bad work ethic, uh, leaving sick form. Like it wasn't awful, but it just, it wasn't ever motivated. Now, like now I'll just sit down and I'll, I can do work, for just bang it out. But I think, um, for me, if I'd had a gap year, I wouldn't have done anything. If I'd gone straight into work, I would have been too bad with my work ethic to develop it in that sense. And then an apprenticeship, for me, the defining factor was the credentials that I was going to gain from Bournemouth Uni because they are rated so highly. I just thought it was worth paying. Although it's expensive, it was worth paying that little bit extra just for hopefully easier transition into a working life or working job. Okay. Just because, yeah, I don't know, apprenticeships are amazing and I wouldn't ever put them down because you can learn just the same amount that I've learned, if not more. It it's just for the, me uh, it was about it was okay. it was just a job so yeah. let's say an apprenticeship offered the same kind of you know the credentials would you have chosen an apprenticeship or university so that's a difficult one as well because but i think my family are quite they're traditionalists i think my, oh, okay. both my parents went to university so you're going a to lot of my family have been so it wasn't ever and also they described uni as being really, really fun and something that like, you know, I've learned a lot of life skills at uni being independent for three years that I don't think I would have got. So there's a lot of pros and cons. It depends how much I would have been earning. There would have been too many things. I would have had to weigh up a lot. Basically. Okay. It wouldn't just be credentials, as but as, that was a defining factor for me. Yeah. So okay. I'm not but sure. Can you tell us more about bedroom to booth? 
Yeah, so Bedroom to Booth is a multimedia project. Uh, the main sort of piece of content is a documentary. It's about 18 minutes long, 18 minutes, 30 seconds. Um, and it was literally me filming my mate who suffers with mental health problems uh, and him putting himself out there and that journey going from mixing in his bedroom, just using music as an outlet for anxiety or depression, just in, as a es- form of escapism almost, um, to actually using that skill that he has to produce music live or mix music live in front of a crowd and an audience. And it was a really interesting journey. You sort of, there's highs and lows. We interview three other DJs as well who are really, really good in the scene. They're really big in Bournemouth scene. Um, it was a, we, there's a website where all the little content's hosted. It's uh, bedroomtobooth.com. So if you want, if that, if you want to have a quick look over the actual project, it's all there, but there was, like there's photographs, there was projection mapping. So we had DJ visualizers uh, all over the club, uh, the documentary, lots of promo videos, and it's just a whole multimedia project sort of surrounding the sort of mental health aspect and the journey, his journey from bedroom to DJ booth and how it went. Okay. So obviously we're having this conversation online as we can't have it in person. So mm-hmm. how are you holding up during COVID-19? So I am... Um, doing not too bad to be honest with you i've set myself a lot of goals that's one thing that keeps me driven now so i started the 100 press up a day challenge just as a means of doing some form of exercise on day 24 today so um i could only do 15 at the start it was embarrassing i got 50 today so that's my best so like doing stuff like that where you're doing you're achieving something each day is amazing i've been running a lot and um So, yeah, I've been running every single day just as a means of, like, keeping the mental health good and proper. And also having the amount of uni work that I have, there's no point to ever sit down and be like, God, I'm really bored because it's just I could always be doing work. So at the minute, I've got a lot of goals and a lot of things that I'm working towards. So it hasn't really dawned on me that I'm in lockdown or I'm not allowed to leave my house besides exercising. Mm -hmm. However, I guarantee you as soon as this is over, I'm going to struggle with lockdown because... It's meant to be summer. I'm meant to be chilling and I'm stuck in my house. I haven't seen a lot of my mates. That's what, and my girlfriend. I haven't seen a lot of people that I want to see. So besides that, it's fine. But yeah, I've, I think after work's done, I'm going to struggle a lot more. I want to see my mates and my girlfriend a lot more than I currently have time for. How has it affected your course? My course, I got very lucky. I'd done a lot of my filming and a lot of my production before this actually happened. I think it could have gone set like it could have gone south very quickly. Um, if I hadn't have done the event before, I would have had no means of doing any event because it wouldn't be allowed. There's a girl on my course who had a whole film planned out, all of the pre-production done to a T, perfect. COVID nineteen hit, she couldn't do any of her filming, any of her production. So, no, luckily, there's no detriment policy that's been put in place. However, for the portfolio and just for your own means of satisfaction not being able to produce the content you've been working on as an idea for months would be really, really demotivating. Mm-hmm. I feel, but for me personally, I got really lucky. I'd done most of mine early oh. on for the first time in my life. I, <laughs> I leave everything until last minute <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. Someone up there was telling me to do it now. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's useful. Okay. So at this point, we let students kind of like uh, just summarize everything we spoke about. Some of them like to say, you can go, um, obviously you could talk about um, Bedroom to Booth. This is the YouTube. This is my Insta. Put your socials. Or you could do like a little um, motivational, like if you're thinking of doing a media production, literally the floor is yours. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'd say if you want to go to uni, go to uni. If you don't want to go to uni, don't go to uni. There's no pressure to do anything. It's your life. Life's too short. Make the most of it. If you want to make content, there's so many means of doing it. Start now. Why why are you waiting for tomorrow? Literally, just go and start doing what you want to do. Just grab life by the balls and just make the most of it because, I don't know, I've sat about and wished I'd done things and I'm only 20 years old. So I just think it's useful to go and it might be embarrassing putting yourself out there, but when you're earning P or when you're out there doing what you want to do, you'll have so many people wishing that they'd done the same. So I just think go and do what you want to do study where you want to study don't study if you don't want to study but just your life make the most of what you want to do and i if you want to check out the project that i've done it's bedroom to booth.com bedroom to booth on youtube is the documentary uh search it up and you'll find it and uh if you want to follow me on instagram it's at louis.callahan or at bedroom to booth and that's all i have to say
So if you just want to end with, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'm plugged in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'm plugged in. Thank you. Carl. Thank you.